Hey everyone, we're back again with another video on how to use the Unusual Whales platform. Now, we've discussed NetFlow and Net Premium briefly in other videos, but in this video, we're going to give the full breakdown of how to read and use these tools with examples directly from the platform. We'll start off here by taking a look at the market tide as a whole. To get to the market tide from anywhere on the site, you'll click on the navigation tab these three lines on the left here, and then select Market Data, and finally, Market Tide. Now, we covered the different data sets that appear at the top, sides, and bottom of this tool in a previous video, so for this one, we're only going to focus on the Market Tide chart itself. At the very top, you can select the Overview Date. This way you can view how the market tide functioned in prior trading sessions. This overview will default to the current trading session. Now, let's break down the contents of the tool. First, the yellow line displays the current spot price of the S&P 500 ETF, SPY. The green line tracks net call premium, meaning ask side call premiums minus the bid side call premiums. And the red line tracks the puts in the exact same way. If the green line rises, like it did right here, that's showing us there are more ask side than bid side calls. Likewise for the red line. If either line that you're watching is above this middle divider here on the x-axis, that means there are more ask side transactions than bid side. Likewise, if the line is below this dividing line, there are more bid side transactions than ask side. This middle line here represents zero dollars of premium, either net negative or positive. So quick recap here. Ask side calls move the green line up, whereas bid side calls move the green line down. Likewise for the puts. Ask side puts move the red line up, and bid side puts move the red line down. See how these values are changing as I choose different time frames on this chart. This is showing us the real time net premium activity across the entire market. One thing that's worth noting here is that mid-fill transactions do not appear in this algorithm. So if an options contract transacts at the mid, for example, if the ask is $1 and the bid is $0.90 cents and the transaction occurs at $0.95 cents per contract, that will not show up in this net premium chart. And the last thing we'll take a look at on the market tide chart is the volume profile down here at the bottom. This volume is calculated by taking the aggregated call volume in the same way that we discussed for the call premium earlier and subtract by the aggregated put volume. So what this means is if this volume profile is green, there are more ask side calls and bid side puts than there are ask side puts and bid side calls. If it's red, the opposite is true. More ask side puts and bid side calls than there are ask side calls and bid side puts. Some traders will utilize this volume profile in tandem with the net premiums to find confluence between the two to help choose market direction and sentimentality. Now, real quick, we'll go over how we come to these values. You can actually pop this out on your own right on the tool by clicking this information icon next to the market tide header. So let's really quickly go over how we derive these net premiums. If there are $15,000 in call premiums transacted at the ask, this would have an effect of increasing the daily net call premium by that $15,000. However, if $10,000 in call premiums come in transacted at the bid, it has the effect of decreasing the daily net call premium by $10,000. That would mean that the resulting net premium from both of these trades would be $5,000 in net call premium. 
That's because we had $15,000 in ask side premiums. Then we had $10,000 in bid side premiums. $15,000 minus $10,000 is $5,000 in net premiums. The same goes for puts. The identical calculation is made for puts to find that net put premium as is utilized with net call. And again, a reminder, mid fill transactions do not get counted in this equation. So now what I wanna do is travel to a single tickers page, we'll use SPY again, and go over the net premium as a whole. Remember, we just covered how to read net put premium versus net call premium as two separate lines on the chart. What we'll be looking at now is looking at net premium as a whole. Now I'm gonna adjust our view here from one day to seven, just so we can get more of a view on our chart here to explain what I'm going to say. So the way this overall net premium chart works is basically the same as the call and put split net premium chart, only this time those net premiums are combined. So in this case, net bullish premium, which is ask side calls, bid side puts, makes the line rise. Net bearish premium, which is ask side puts and bid side calls, makes the line drop. We still have this same baseline x-axis of zero. So if the line is green and above zero, we have more ask side calls and bid side puts. And if it is below zero, we have more ask side puts and bid side calls. However, it's worth noting that the overall net premium view may not show as much in real time as the view with calls and puts separated might. With just net premium as a whole on, you only have directionality of the line and crossovers of the baseline zero for reference instead of having the call and put lines together to make your decisions. Now you may wonder how can traders actually utilize this tool? Now I'll preface this to say that no strategy is a permanent guaranteed 100% hit rate. This explanation serves only as a guideline to how some traders utilize market tide in their trading and should not be construed as a get rich quick tactic or any sort of guarantee that you will realize profits. Now with that said, what some traders do is they'll watch this overall net premium of calls and puts intraday. That's what the tool's for after all. They'll keep an eye out for divergences. Is the stock price falling while call premiums are rising dramatically? Some would say that's an indication of a changing bias from bearish to bullish. Now another way that some traders have been using this tool has been to look for a cross of the net premium in calls and the net premium in puts, meaning the red line crosses above the green line or vice versa and they'll take that as a sign of shifting sentiment. Here's an example from April 1st, 2024. Notice how in the morning here, the underlying SPY started out green with the net call premiums above zero. Here we see these net call premiums at about 38 and a half million net premium. And the net put premium was below zero. We've got significantly more ask side calls, then we do ask side puts. Notice how wide this gap is. Puts are below zero, calls are above it. As time progressed, the net call premiums began to drop, meaning more bid side calls were coming in than ask side. While the opposite was true for net put premiums, we started seeing the red line rise as time went on. This means that more ask side puts were beginning to come in. Then around 9.30 central time, the net put premiums went positive while the net call premiums went negative. Here's the cross we were just discussing. Right after the cross occurred, we see the line of net put premiums steepen. More and more ask side puts versus bid side puts. As the net call premium dropped, more bid side calls than ask side calls. In tandem with that, shortly after we had our cross of net put premiums, crossing over net call premiums, the SPY price also dropped more dramatically and continued to drop throughout the day as the call premiums continued to fall with it. From the point of our cross, SPY dropped an additional $2. 
with a total fall of $3.45 from SPY's high of day. Again, this isn't something someone should over leverage on. It's simply an example of how some traders, namely day traders and scalpers, have used this tool. There's no such thing as a permanent 100% guarantee.